Listen, the word of God tonight is going to come forth uh, in the in the uh, in the uh, form of faith tonight. The title of the message is "Apply Faith." Apply faith. Now, some of y'all be like, "Yeah, okay, well, that's cool. You know, apply faith." But can I say this to some of you guys? <clears throat> you don't have faith because everybody has it, but you don't have faith just to say. You have faith. Everybody has faith. And it's not a lie that you say that. Yeah, I do have faith. Yeah, you do. Because the Bible says that every man was given a measure of faith. Amen. Amen. So you're not lying when you say I have faith. But here's what I'm telling you. You don't have faith just to say you have faith. It's meant to be used. It's meant to be applied. This is how you do the works that Jesus did, is with faith. Come on, someone say faith tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so tonight I want to take you through, and this is not exhaustive. This is not everything about faith, so don't think, well, there's more to it than that, Pastor. I understand that, and I get it. But I'm going to give you enough tonight for you to be empowered in your faith so that when you go back out into this world, you can, I'm going to say it, dominate. Praise God. All right. Praise the Lord. That word's in the Bible. It's in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. All right. He's giving you authority and dominion. So I say dominion. Come on. Don't be afraid of that word. Dominion. All right. God created you a, a very powerful being, guys. You were created in his image and in his likeness. So I say amen. Yes, you were. And to be honest with you guys, uh, you know, there shouldn't be any reason why we are being overtooken by circumstances and situations. Now, they will show up. I'm not saying that they're not going to show up. I'm just saying those things, because, okay, let me say this. Those things are not to legislate you as a believer. Amen. Because let me tell you why. You do believe that you were made in his image and in his likeness, right? Come on, how many of y'all believe that in this house? And if you don't, we need to meet after service. I'll give you a little teaching on it. You do believe that you're made in his image and in his likeness, right? Yes. Okay, so let me tell you this. Circumstances and situations do not legislate or govern God. Oh, okay, I didn't believe that, all right? Okay, let me say it again. Circumstances and situations do not govern, tell God what to do. They don't legislate anything that God has. Nothing pushes God around. Are y'all with me? And where is God at right now? Yes, he's in the heavens. Where's Jesus at right now? Yes, he's in the heavens too. But he's also somewhere else. He's in you. The Bible says that greater is he that is in me than the devil who's in this world. Hallelujah. So you've got to understand this, Sister Rosa, that when we walk out here in this world, and it tries to push you around, because it will try to. It tries to govern you. It will try to. It will even try to dominate you. It will. It will run you over, and it will. You've got to understand that. Hold up. Wait a minute. Stop. Oh, everybody trying, the world and everything. Hold on. you got to say this, and you speak it out loud. Greater is he that is in me than you. All of y'all, you worldly everything. You don't govern me because I have God who is my source of power. Come on, somebody. My source of love. Come on, somebody. My source of grace. Come on, somebody. My source of, of dominion. My source of authority. My source of faith. I'm going to tell you something right now, guys. You've got to understand that you cannot be bullied. I don't care how abrasive that world is. I don't care how um, persistent it is. I don't care how intimidating it can be. You do not bow down to that system. I'll say it in Spanish. You do not bow down to that system. I, could, I didn't know how to say it in Spanish. I, I just said that anyways. 
Yo no sé cómo decir eso. A bow down. ¿Cómo se dice bow down? Ah, uh, no te agaches. <laughs> Praise God. I love that. All right. Here we go. Whew, man. Somebody's got to hear this tonight. Because there are some things trying to show up at your door. There are some things trying to knock on your door. They're trying to be abrasive, trying to be persistent, trying to bully you, trying to intimidate you. And if you're the only one that stands up and your family doesn't, praise God. David was the only one that stood up against that, against that giant. 15 years old. But he knew his authority. And he did it by faith. Come on now. So the thing about faith tonight, guys, apply faith. Faith is meant to be applied. It's meant to be useful. It's meant to be in operation. It's meant to do something. Okay? Uh, because you can sit there and let faith just sit there all day long. But, man, if you're not doing something about it. And by the end of this message, I'm going to show you guys how to apply faith. But I need to take you through the Bible to show you that there are some things that need to be done. Let's go into Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. King James translation. Watch what it says here in the word. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. You should meditate on this word day and night that you may observe to do. So I say to do. There's action here, guys. So you have, to, you have to study this Bible. You have to meditate on this word so that you may be able to do. Uh, Sister Christy said it earlier, faith comes by hearing, according to Romans chapter 10. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you have the word of God in your mouth, come on somebody. When you have the meditation, the word of God in your mind, you meditate on it. Now you can do. Observe to do according to all that is written in this book. Ooh. For then, so I say then, shall ye, shall, for then you shall make your way prosperous. And then you shall have good success. Wow, come on. Why is that possible? Because your faith is. It's not just sitting there. Your faith is actually doing something. And watch this. And now you are prosperous against this world bullying you and trying to tell you what to do. You don't have to fall for it. You don't have to fall for the lust of the flesh. You don't have to fall for the pride of life. And you don't have to fall for the desires of these deceitful things. The pride of life, the uh, lust of the flesh, and the... Uh, what's the other one? I forgot what the other one is. But anyways, those things don't have to govern you. Amen. Come on. I need to get somebody out of that stuff, man, because that, that world out there is bringing up too many options. It's trying to distract you from the way. <laughs> Come on. It's trying to distract you from the life. It's trying to get you to Mars. It's trying to get you to the metaverse. It's trying to get you into science. It's trying to deflect that you were created in God's image. It's, they're, they're trying to prove that we can be doubled, cloned. You can't clone God. You can't clone his creation. It'll be faulty. And we're not going to fall for no faultiness. Amen? Amen? All right. All right. Watch what the message translation says in a portion of that. I like how it says it. It says, don't get off track, either left or right, so as to make sure you get to where you're going. Oh, oh praise God. Can I tell you this, guys? Faith is going to take you to where you need to get to. Without it, you're going to wander around trying to figure life out out there. But you don't have to figure life out. You can faith life in by applying faith. When you apply faith, it will make sure you get to where you're going. 
praise God. Come on. And don't for a minute let this book of the Revelation be out of your mind. Ponder and meditate on it day and night, making sure you practice everything written in it. You practice it. How do you practice something? You got to do it. That's why, Sister Christy, we got to practice. <laughs> Come on now. Are y'all with me T tonight? You've got to practice it. You've got to do something. Faith is not something you have. It's, it's faith is something you use. Come on. Amen? You practice everything written in it, then you'll get where you're going. Oh, my gosh. Come on. I'm telling you, man, it's like, it's like we're, there's people wandering around out there trying to, like, where am I? Who am I? I'm confused. I don't even know what in the world's going on. But they have veered away from the book. <laughs> come on. And this word is what actually calls faith to come. There's a scripture in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, that compares faith to a servant. Faith serves you. Faith is always ready to do what God wants to do. Faith. And sometimes that may seem impossible, but that's what faith is for. Faith is so that you can have a mindset, have a heart set, have a soul set to do the impossible. And don't worry about how it's going to get done. What do I need to do here? No, no. Faith already has every single source of tools that you're going to need to accomplish this. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, somebody. Someone say, I have faith and I apply faith. Come on, someone say it with me. I apply faith. All right, praise God. Now look what James 1.22 through 25 says in the King James translation. It says this, James is encouraging us. He says, but be ye doers of the word. Someone say doers. I mean, you got to do. Come on. And Joshua said, so that you can observe to do something. Here James is saying almost the same thing. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Now, it starts with hearing the word. But once faith comes and you hear the word, now you got to do something. Or you at least want to. To do something. Now, look what this next line says. It says, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. What? How many of y'all know? Amen. How many of y'all know that there's a lot of deceiving going on out there? A lot of lying going on. A lot of cheating going on. Come on. A lot of using going on. A lot of abusing going on. A lot of manipulation going on. Come on. Well, watch this. When we fall into those things, it's because we haven't been doing. And some of us may, may not even been hearing. And now we're deceiving our own selves. So can I just say this? I'm not talking to anybody here. I'm just saying that if you're being deceived, you're doing it to yourself. It's because you, oh, Jesus, come on, somebody. It's because I did not apply faith. Oh, somebody came to church tonight. Because without faith, you can't please God. Hebrews 11, 6 says that. Sin fe, no puedes, uh, said Dios reír. I don't know, that's, that's probably wrong. But anyways, you can't please God. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And I think that that's our whole scheme of being born again. It's to please God. Come on. So we need faith. Not just faith sitting there, but faith doing something. Amen. Come on, faith doing something. Watch what the next line says, verse 23. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Next verse. Next verse, please. For he beholds himself, and as he sees himself, he goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But whosoever looks into the perfect word of God, liberty, and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man or this person or you shall be blessed in his deed. Wow, praise God. Did y'all guys get that? In the, in the New Amplified, James 1.22 says this. It says, but prove yourself doers of the word. Watch this, watch this next in parentheses words. Actively and continually 
obeying God's precepts or his word or his laws, right? It says, watch this, and not merely listeners who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning. What? This is, why I, this is why I tell you guys, and I taught you guys two Wednesdays ago on apply the word. I was telling you that you do more than just read it. You have to internalize this word. You have to allow it to become living on the inside of you because that is the mechanism by how faith is going to be applied, guys. You cannot do what God's called you to do without the word. I mean, think about it. It says there that when you're, when you're not a doer and just a hearer only, you're like a person that looks himself in the mirror, and when he walks away, he forgets what he looks like. You know, that happens all the time. How many times have you come to church, you heard the word, and when you leave, I don't even know what Pastor Bear was talking about. That's why I have to yell. <laughs> Get it all up into your soul, praise God, so it'll stick. We used to look at other things, gee, that were sticky, icky, icky. Remember that? But now we got to let that word be a little sticky, icky, icky, and let it stick to my soul. Come on, somebody. Amen? Praise God. Because faith is what God's looking for. The Bible says that when Jesus comes back, will he find faith? What? He's looking for faith, guys, and he's going to be looking for faith. There was a man in the Bible. He was a centurion, and his soldier was sick at home. He meets up with Jesus, says, Jesus, will you pray for my soldier? He's at home, and he's sick. He can't do anything, and I need him to get up and do some things. And Jesus says, sure, I'll go to your house. He says, no, 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 you don't have to come to my house. You're not worthy to come. I mean, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. He says, speak the word only. And Jesus said, wow, what amazing faith. I've never heard such faith like this in all of Israel. Come on, somebody, praise God. It's, listen, listen, your faith can amaze even Jesus. And watch, Jesus spoke the word, and the soldier was healed. Ah, uh, Jesus, come on, somebody. I ain't got to go visit your house. Some of y'all, can you come pray for my, I mean, yeah, I don't mind doing it. But I don't have to. I can just speak the word only. And if you would just believe and receive, boom, that person's healed. I have had people call me on the phone telling me they have demons in their house. I feel demons in my house, Pastor. I need you to come uh, visit my house. I said, no, here's what you need to do. Put that phone out there into the atmosphere. That's what I told them to do. Put it out into the atmosphere and let me speak into it. And I declare right now, that I said, I took authority over every demon and the sound of this phone right now in Jesus' name. By the next day, she called me back. She said, I, they're gone. Come on. Come on, somebody. Hey. Man. Why? Because the principle's there. Faith is meant to be used. All right? Y'all good? Now watch what James 2, 14 through 17 says. James 2, 14 through 17. It says, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Oh, good. Can that kind of faith save anyone? And that's, a, that's really saying it can't. Watch what the next verse says. Suppose, because it's now it's going to tell us how this, this works here. It's saying here, suppose you see a brother or a sister who has no food or clothing. Next verse. And you say, hey, goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So let's just say you have it, like you have faith, because this is what it's trying to give us an illustration about. You have faith, but you're not using it. Watch what it says. So you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It, unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. What? Faith is dead and useless. And the Amplified Classic says it is inoperative and ineffective. And the Passion Translation says it is phony. Faith can actually be phony. I, I remember I told somebody one time, I said, you know, bro, you, you can't fake faith. You can say you have it all day, but you can't fake it. Because the fruit of what you've been doing should show up. Somebody say, my faith is not phony. Come on, somebody. I'm going to put it to work. It's a servant. Put it to work. And, and, and the last, the message translation says, 
that faith without works is nonsense. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It's nonsense. It's just useless. It's inoperative. It's no good. You just have it, but you're not using it. Come on, somebody. Amen? Now, here's the deal, guys. Here in, here in, here in this church, we want to make sure that we're not a breed of people that sit on the sidelines. We're just sitting there with faith. But we want to be the ones in the game making the plays happen. Come on, amen? We got to go out there, man, and be the hands, the feet of Jesus. We got to go do some stuff. We got to apply our faith. We can't just say we have it because that's what the word said, but we've got to use it. Amen. Come on, somebody. Praise God. So here, I'm going to take you guys, and we're going to finish up here. I've got about 10 minutes left on the clock. Here's what it says here. How can I apply faith? Somebody, some of y'all might be asking that. How, how can I apply faith? Well, here's number one. Speak the word into existence. Watch this. In other words, you don't stop speaking the word until you see it manifest. Well, I've been, I've been, I've already said two times, Pastor, that by his stripes, I am healed. Man, I still feel pain in my body. Well, you got to continually keep doing it because God did it. In the book of Romans chapter 4, uh, um, Abraham, who is the father of our faith, it talks about how Abraham believed God when God told Abraham that at 100 years of age, you are going to have a baby. And the Bible says that, that Abraham believed God and counted Abraham as righteous. And because he's the father of our faith, that we also will be counted righteous according to this. Because number one, he believed God at his word. He believed that God could raise the dead. That's what the scripture says. That he believed that God was one who had the power to raise the dead. And here's the second thing that he believed, and this is where we get into it. He also believed that God is the one who can uh, call those things that aren't as though they were. You're made in God's image, you're made in God's likeness. You have the speaking ability to speak the word into manifestation. So you got a circumstance, situation showing up right now in your life? Right now, some, some of y'all sitting here, you got some stuff going on in your life just like I do. But do you have a word for that thing? And are you speaking the manifestation of that word into existence? Because that's how you apply your faith. Now, remember, I said this is not exhaustive. This is not all to it. But these are just some things that will help you to be able to do this. Like what word do you have for the circumstance you're facing right now? What word do you have? What stone do you have in your slingshot that's going to knock this, this giant down? Because David not only had one in his slingshot, he had five more in his pocket. You should, you should at least have six <laughs> scriptures or something. What's the word you're standing on right now for the situation that you're facing? Because that's how you apply faith in this instance. You speak the word into existence. Here's a second way to apply faith. You believe the word. You believe the word as if, as if this word, and it is, not as if, but you believe that this word is real. It is a reality. Things in the Bible did happen. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Jesus did turn water into wine. Jesus did heal a man who was a paraplegic for 38 years, told him to stand, pick up your bed, and walk, and that happened. He did a woman who was bent over for 18 years. She didn't know how else to stand up, but Jesus said, stand up. Boom. Boom. She came straight up. That happened. Peter walked on water right out of a boat. That happened happened. Come on, somebody. There were two people in the Bible that had withered hands. Jesus healed them both. That happened. There was a young man in a group of thousands who had two fish and five loaves. He presented it to Jesus. Jesus lifted it up, prayed over it, blessed it, and multiplied the papa. Praise God. That happened. Come on, somebody. You've got to believe that Moses put a stick in the water and the sea lifted up and parted and the ground was dry. That happened. There was a man named Jonah who, who got put into a well for three days. That happened. And then got spit out. Praise God. There was a man who was boiled in oil for the gospel and did not die. So they had to throw him out to the island of Patmos. And he's the one, John, who wrote the book of Revelation. That happened. Are y'all with me here? And God said, the word says that God is no respecter of persons, so if he did it for them, 
He'll do it for you. And can I just tell you this? This book is filled with true stories of the impossible become impossible, of the supernatural work of God. You've got to believe this word. Look what it says in Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 24, and it says this. Then Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God. Not faith in anything else, but faith in God. He had to put that in there. Because people back then were having faith in other things. As a matter of fact, in the, today's times, people got faith in other things. They got faith in brujeria. They got faith in the horoscope. They got faith in palm reading. They got faith in the huevo and the egg. They got faith in the broom. They got faith in, in curanderas. They got faith in all this stuff. But Jesus had to specifically tell us, have faith in God. <laughs> Praise God. He said, and then he says this, and it, this is how you do it. And I'll tell you the truth. Because you have faith in God, you can say to this mountain, Ooh, praise God, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. What? Let me tell you something, guys. You have authority on the inside of you. It's not about taking control of your life. It's about taking authority over your life. And you have it right here in your mouth. You speak this thing into existence and you believe. Because watch what it says next. And it will happen. But you must really believe it. Believe it will happen. And have no doubt in your heart. Now watch what it says next. Verse 24. Praise God. I tell you, oh gosh, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Somebody better say amen to that and give a good hand clap right there. That's the word. So first, you got to speak the word into existence. You speak it until it manifests. Number two, you got to believe this word as if it is a reality. Everything in this Bible happened. And some of this stuff is going to happen. Amen. But we, 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 we have a heads up. We already know. God already gave us the, the end result. We win. Come on, somebody. You win. Someone say, I win. Now, here's the third way you can apply your faith. Obey the word. Obey it. See, because faith allows you to do. The fourth thing you can do to apply your faith, serve. Serve. You know, it takes faith for us to come up in here and do praise and worship. That's faith in action. Do the AVL back there in the back. Do children's ministry. That takes faith. Serve coffee. That takes faith. Be an usher. That takes faith. Why? Because you believe that this is the house of God. Come on. And you serve in this house. Serve in the ministry. Serve the pastor. Serve. Just serve. Because that is another way how you apply your faith. Wow. Come on, somebody. I mean, so here's some things you can do. Watch this. Obey the word. How? Okay, well, lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. Say to this mountain to move, and it will. Walk on water. Believe the impossible is possible. Be kind to the unkind. Love the unlovable. Yeesh. Come on. Heal the sick. Start that business. Build that church. Start a ministry. Pray for those that persecute you. Bless your enemy. Forgive that person who did you wrong. Make that phone call. Send that text to someone to encourage them. Put up videos on social media that encourages faith. Pray for your meal in public and in private. And trust God that you can trust again. Just obey. All that's biblical right there. Amen? Come on, somebody. Serve the ministry, serve the church, serve God. Serve the ministry, serve the church, serve God. This is how we apply faith. Did y'all guys get that tonight? Amen. Was that good? Did y'all receive that? Praise the Lord. Amen.